Do you hate when your table saw is not long enough for a long piece of wood or a big sheet of plywood or over at your miter saw if your miter station's a little short? Well, today we're gonna show you a really cheap and easy adjustable wing that can be added to any one of the tools in your shop with pre-built legs. It's a super easy build today on Bittner Built. So on today's build, we're going to add a very simple extension wing that folds down out of the way, but is super easy to build because it comes with pre-made parts. So what I did with this system was I utilized a picnic table's leg mechanism. So really, it folds down very easily and will lock in place where my table is perfectly straight. Since it's steel construction, it can hold a lot of weight and support everything. And we just lengthened my table saw to a nine foot width so that I can utilize this length when I want to. But this is also where my uh, drill press station usually lives. So when I don't need this long extension for let's say cutting apart sheet goods, I can easily just fold it back into place and it's out of the way. So we're gonna start off this project with a four foot folding picnic table. Uh, this one was purchased at Home Depot by Lifetime and it was $42 today. And what we want from this is the leg assembly. We only need half of the leg assembly for this project, but of course you could use the other half for a wing on the other side of your project if you'd like. Uh, to remove this, all we have to do is take out six screws and then we're going to break the pin that is holding both sides together. We'll just do that with a hammer and a nail punch. So once we've removed this from the bottom of the table, you have one side of the leg unit. Um, optional to you if you want to decide to cut off this strap that this one had, I just leave it on. Um, the six screws that we're holding it onto the table, they're actually decent sized screws, so we're just going to reuse those in the project so we don't have to use anything else. The main consideration when you're picking a picnic table though is that your leg set is adjustable. If you pick one with a static leg set there, you're going to have to make sure that you're mounting the wing at the exact height of that leg that's going to create a level surface. When you're using something like this that has an adjustable factor to it, you'll notice that there are holes on the inside of this pipe for the locking mechanism to go into. So once the entire setup is done, and you find out that there is not a locking hole to accommodate what you need at the moment, you can go ahead and just drill a hole where you need it to enable it to lock, you know, at the height that you want it to lock into. Now that we have our leg array separated, we need to try and think about how we are mounting our wing to whatever we're mounting it to. In this case, it's the side of my delta table saw. And as you can see, it has three holes here in the metal wing that's on the side of the saw. In addition, I also have an opening into my front rail right here where my uh, fence slides on. And so since this is, it is steel, but it is weaker metal than the cast iron top. If this was the cast iron top right here, nothing's going to bend that. But this is a very you know, thin stamped metal. So I'm gonna utilize this rail as an additional support just because I don't want all of the weight to be focused right there. So, you know, we're doing this project as a reverse engineered thing. I've already built this before and enjoy this table. So I've dismantled everything so that we can show you how everything fit together. So what I did was I took a scrap board that I had and cut it to the exact length of my table. And then over on the end, I notched out a small piece for a two by one inch piece of pine that I then tacked in with glue and screw at the end, just to give it kind of that extra level of support when I slide it into its home at the end of my table saw right here. 
Now, then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're flush at the top of the saw and even a slight hair lower than flush because, of course, we're fine with the support coming in a little bit lower, but we're not fine if it's above our table saw plane. Then I would take my pencil behind where the hole is and mark each one of the holes. That way I can then drill those holes out for the inclusion of a bolt, which is what's going to hold this to the end of the table. When deciding how large of a tabletop you're going to have, the main consideration is how tall your machine is that you're mounting it to. You could be adding it to a four foot tall cart, in which case you can get around a four foot tall wing. In this scenario, I have to compete with the fact that this table saw has a foot that extends out. And so when choosing the height or length, depending on what position it's in, of the table wing, I want it to be just above that foot. So if that wing is out, that foot pedal is out, um, I'm not hitting it consistently. So in my case, I was able to measure from the very top of my table saw down to here, and it gives me about 30 inches. So in my scenario, I decided to make it a 29 inch, 29 and a half inch uh, tabletop so that I cleared this foot with a little bit of room, but got the maximum length out of it that I was able to. I wanted to take a break to talk about my sponsor, safetysourcesupply.com. They're a discount retailer of name brand, new in box tools at up to 50% off retail. They want their customers to be happy with their purchases. So they only want me to give completely honest reviews, which is the only way I'd be willing to do it anyhow. Honesty builds trust in the customer. And since they're a retailer, not a manufacturer, they don't care if I say something negative about a tool. If I think it's junk, they'll just stop selling it and sell something else instead. So if you're a tool lover like I am, I need you to know about safetysourcesupply.com. Right now, there's a Milwaukee Red Lithium 5 amp hour battery that retails for $149 that they're selling for $55.99. Batteries are expensive, so when you see an amazing deal like that, you need to jump on it. Make sure you bookmark safetysourcesupply.com. They change their deals all the time and are constantly getting in new products at amazing prices. I was a customer before they sponsored this channel, so I can attest to the phenomenal prices on this site. So go check out safetysourcesupply.com. They are the source for the best prices of tools anywhere. So now we're gonna work on the mounting system of our top. Our top can be any type of surface you want. In this case, I have it as a piece of um, birch plywood. And the important thing is about mounting the piano hinge. The piano hinge obviously has to be cut to whatever width you're making your wing to. But you're going to want to make sure that the rounded part of the hinge is extending over the bottom of your tabletop surface. You want this to be hanging out in nowhere because if you were to screw this against the wood with the rounded part there, it will create deflection and it would not allow a full open and close of your system. So you want to make sure you leave this rounded part sticking over. After you have your piano hinge screwed in, you're going to want to make sure that you take your plate and put it in the correct orientation before you screw it in. Now since, again, this is the top of our surface, we're going to place the plate fully under and then fold up the piano hinge just to make sure we're in the right position one more time. So this is going to be entering into my rail and this side will be against the table saw. So now our table apparatus is in the open state and then this is what it would look like if it was hanging down in the open state. So now at this point we can get a couple screws in um, and of course, Piano Hinge has lots and lots of screws. What you should do is get two screws in, get it to where it's holding itself, and then make sure everything's lined up correctly. Get all the rest of your screws in. So the most important thing in this build is making sure that this mounting bracket is flush with the top of your table. So when you're getting ready to go ahead and screw in the, uh, the piano hinge, you must ensure that as it hinges, it ends up in a flush position 
at the top. You could have it be a slight bit lower, that would be okay, but then you run the risk of wood kind of hitting that gap and getting stuck. You really want it as flush as possible. So shoot for flush. And as a side note, if you screw up a little bit, you could always take a hand plane to it or sander to it at the end and just make sure that you are exactly flush because as you're sliding wood across here, you don't want anything to snag. We all know how that can screw everything up and um, don't want it to happen. So now it's time to go ahead and mount the leg assembly. We have our mounting bracket for whatever we're attaching it to. In this case, it's my table saw. And so we're going to grab the legs that we took off in the beginning from the picnic table. It's very important that you grab at the hinge area and pinch while you hold these legs because just in getting ready for this video, these have come off twice. Um, it is not a fastened item when it's, um, or like a secure item when it's not screwed into something. And so it's easy to come off. So what we want to do is make sure that the end of the tubular frame is at the very edge of our top surface. Then we want to take a square and make sure that we are square to the edge of the surface as well before we put in our first screw. All right, awesome. So we have our table assembled. The legs extend fully without any sort of resistance. If we had had either of those mounting legs um, not square to the table, you know, we might have felt some sort of weird resistance. And so you'd want to go back and check. But it looks like we're ready for mounting. Prior to mounting, we want to make sure that the three holes that I am using for my bolt holes to attach to the table saw have a countersink drill around it. If you have countersink bits, great. If you don't, just use a much larger diameter drill bit and drill, you know, a fourth of the way into the wood. That way, when we use our bolts, we're able to place our bolts inside and they are able to sit flush or below flush so they do not impact the folding of the table. If these bolts were to stick out, I could only fold the table this much and it would actually cause damage to the table every single time. So make sure we do these flush. Now, before I apply this to the table, I'm going to put it on the edge of my workbench like I'm doing now and insert all three of my bolts prior to trying to get it in place at the table. Okay, with my bolts already in place on the table, I'm gonna extend the legs. And that's gonna be my helper to make sure that I get this table into position correctly. Once I'm holding it here, I'm going to extend the legs. Now the table's not so heavy. And since I have all these bolts in, I'm able to just move close to the table. And I'm going to make sure that all my bolts go right in the hole. And bam. Underneath, I'm pinching it with my hands so that it does not move. So now while I'm pinching the under part of the table, I'm going to add a washer around the bolt and then hand thread the nut onto this bolt. Okay, so now I can relax, everything's in place. I'm not holding the whole thing up. I'm gonna go ahead and add a washer and a nut to the other two bolts. Again, tighten by hand. So as you can see right now, or hopefully you can see, we have a little bit of a gap under the table right here. So you see a little bit of light. So from under the table, I'm gonna grab and gently move it up until we just kiss it. And then I'm gonna begin tightening the bolt so that we are in place. So on the front side of the saw, there was a gap of about a playing card thickness. Over here, I could probably slip a quarter underneath this level right here. So again, I'm gonna lift up until I just kiss it. And then I'm going to tighten off this nut. And there we have a completed wing to our table saw. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this build. It's very easy. It has pre-made parts that you're able to easily source. 
and it's very functional and able to be put on a lot of different things in your shop. I hope you'll like and subscribe to our video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.